Hello, everyone. Uh, I would like to thank you for uh, joining this webinar on the uh, UniCloud uh, platform and uh, the business benefits. My name is Ronnie Gore, and I'm heading uh, the UniCloud platform in Unitronics. Uh, today, we will uh, go over UniCloud functionality, we'll review that, discuss business benefits, and We'll, uh, I will be happy to address any questions you will have uh, during the session. Uh, just to make uh, the flow going on, uh, you are welcome to write me questions as they're coming up. I will take uh, opportunities uh, while I'll do some uh, methodical stops and address the questions at the right uh, timing, depending on where I'm standing in the presentation sequence. Um, so if you don't object, I will start. Uh, as uh, some of you already know, and for those of you who are uh, new to this, uh, UniCloud is a Unitronics uh, IoT platform where we allow uh, users to uh, connect their uh, machines using Unitronics PLCs or any other uh, manufacturer PLC or any smart device uh, which can communicate with the Unitronics based protocols or Modbus to upload the data, the telemetry the PLCs are generating, and to be able to show the data using uh, the dashboard that UniCloud uh, provides you similar to the ones that I'm showing now and many other ones. In terms of architecture, UniCloud is based on a AWS infrastructure. It's running in Europe, in Ireland, for those of you who are asking about that. And it allows collecting data, as I said, from various types of PLCs or smart devices, loading them into the UniCloud and allowing the OEMs and other uh, solution suppliers to design their dashboards and provide this information to the various users they are serving in terms of a uh, data, historical one, business intelligence one, allow, allow you to create some uh, additional business values by collecting the data analyzing, aggregating it, manipulating it, and provide business value to you, those of you who are uh, designing the machines and solution, and also to the end customers who would like to see the real-time data and historical data, and also some business intelligence data that's based on the analysis we allow you using UniCloud. This allows you, obviously, in very, it depends on the various types of user to raise the efficiency as you are able to monitor the functionality. We allow you to do via built-in tools to do fast commissioning to your machine, providing you full control, not only from the uh, PLC, but also remotely, and allow you to go live from start to beginning in less than 30 minutes. We designed UniCloud in a way that it will be very simple, easy, and fast to commission the solution. Not only from just the technical part where you're just configuring the machine, connecting the PLC, but also building the various dashboards and managing your customers, distributors, and the overall ch uh, channel. All this with no code. We provide you with the UniCloud built-in tools, which are very easy to use and implement. And you don't need to worry about anything, just connect and operate. And you don't need to have any worries about which platform, how to run it. Everything is comes from one place and one place only. It is from within the UniCloud configuration. By the way, for more information about UniCloud, you can always go to www.unitronics.cloud, as you can see, at the address at the bottom down of the slide. And here you can find much more information about all aspects of UniCloud. 
So if we speak about the front side, the dashboard building, what we provide you a fully customized platform where you can build whatever design you would like based on the widgets we provide you in a very simple and easy way with which I'll show you later on a widget based configuration. You need to do just uh, drag and drop and uh, configure. There is no coding involved at all. Everything is done with drop down selection, multiple uh, uh, selection, etc. etc. The system comes with predefined set of languages but you can always add your own you can uh, translate the dashboard you can have multiple uh, languages support pair for your solution allowing you and your customers to use your preferred languages it's completely secure we are using a login enforcement certification per uh, asset the machine as i said is running on top of uh, aws where we're using the most advanced tools and some extra security measures to make sure that the data cannot be addressed, everything is encrypted. And on top of that, I'm happy to tell you that we just uh, uh, just uh, been uh, certified also as the cloud platform, as a, also we got the ISO certificate, and now we have the 27017 and 27001 certification for UniCloud and obviously for Unitronics also. So the platform is also officially certified as a secure platform. Uh, be beyond what we talked about, uh, connecting the devices, uh, managing them, seeing them via dashboard, which I'll show you also. We recently also released another set of functionalities, and this is event notifications, where you can trigger events based on either scheduling, alarms notification, or real-time data, which will allow you to send either email notifications or text messages to various customers based on business rules that you will define. All this can be done without touching the POC programming or the device, and you can configure it, set it up, change, maintain it using UniCloud. This gives you a lot of power, very functionality, big functionality to manage, maintain, send various messages to various people based on some business logic as you define it, and obviously you can maintain it as you go along. Uh, before I'm going into the UniCloud demo, uh, if any one of you has any questions, please. Uh, Ask them now, and uh, I will try to answer them. I'll give you a minute or two, if you would like, to write down your questions. If you want to give me kind of hand notice, raise your hand, so I'll know that you're writing your questions now. OK, I see there are no questions at this point, so I'll continue. What you see here is a UniCloud. As you can see it, uh, I'll just log out and re-log in just to show you how it's done. Obviously, if don't, for those of you who, have, who are not using UniCloud yet, you can always go sign up, put your uh, details in. You will get a confirmation mail, and you can log in yourself, enter to the application. You will get some demo data, so you can go in a step-by-step -step, uh, sequence and uh, build your first dashboard without connect connecting any data. Uh, to find more information, you can always open the help. And here you will have also step-by-step -step in instructions for, I'll just expand it, and you, have, you can go here and getting started. And you have a sequence step-by-step -step which will guide you how to build your first dashboard. What we are doing, we provide you with two pumps uh, simula simulation, simulated data for two months of data, and then this will allow you to build the various dashboards. What you can see here is me seeing uh, the dashboard. Uh, obviously, you can see this is my name, Ronnie. Okay, and uh, this is the menu. We can switch languages. 
these are the languages that we defined as supported in this demo, but it can be switched and it can maintain to various others. On the left hand side, we have various options here. I am as an administrator, so I have full capability as the machine builder, as the owner of this uh, instance. Uh, what you can see here, my dashboard will load this uh, screen. Device management will allow me to manage the various devices. Event management will allow me to configure and see the event management I just talked about. Organizations allows me to manage users and other various settings as as we have, as you can see in this case, I have multiple uh, users. I have here my distribution. Okay, here I have some distributor under it. I have some customers and I can always connect customers directly. And here what I have is my dashboard editor, which I'll open a new one and I'll show you in a few minutes how I can configure uh, my uh, dashboards and build them easily and fast. Account management, here you can configure your multiple language support, you can translate. Display setting, you can set up your logo, you can manage your dashboard colors and many other settings. We have the license management, if you have licenses for each and every device, you can see them and manage them, and some other features also. So I'll go back now to our dashboard editor in here what we are uh, showing is a organization that building pump systems it has systems in multiple location with multiple customers which we saw in the organization tree we see the current status of each and every of the machines in the center part we see a maintenance pan where we can see which one of our system requires maintenance the business the rule here is that to so you see them in system which are beyond 7,000 working hours. Here we can see the daily power consumption of all the machines. Here you can see the features which we are aggregating the data. And here we can see a monthly aggregation of power consumption. And here we can see aggregated a daily water flow you no, know, for some May months. To from here we can go we built here a uh, three uh, dashboards one is the overview the second one which i'll go in a moment is the details the very detailed details a uh, uh, data of a machine to this is part of the demo to show everything in one uh, snapshot and the third uh, dashboard is our maintenance overview in this case what we are showing is the machines that are requiring requiring the maintenance to remind you those that are over 7000 hours which we see here on the right hand side and here we can see and go between various machine and we can pick and choose which one we would like to see to see information in terms of uh, the trend of the working hours i'll go back to our Home dashboard, and here I will navigate to the details of our a uh, one of the, our one machines. What we can see here again, we can see gauges, we can see the daily flow of a specific machine. Here we can see the water flow. What I would like to say in these two widgets here is a raw data actually this is the telemetry as it's being downloaded uh, sorry uploaded uh, by the plc we can also download it i clicked here and we'll export it now to csv and when it will be ready i will show it to you the same data for the flow we can also uh, show here on this uh, line graph and we obviously can zoom in and see the data you know, and uh, look here and just zoom into the data. Uh, this line widget is very, very powerful. You can see here up to 20,000 points in one, uh, in one graph and the same thing here. And I think I have, okay, the 
data, here it is, while I was talking in jumped on and just out of curiosity, you can see that we have here 8,500 records, data shown and, okay, I think here I have the date and you can see that we can go, this is starting from now, 17.16, it's like two minutes ago, and from the 27th of March, which is one month of data, as we specified for this graph. Uh, and we can show there more if it's required. Uh, while I was presenting, I had a question, uh, how much data we, we can uh, uh, store? The answer is, it depends on the subscription level. If we, you see in the subscription, we have a, the startup to an advance starting from one year up to seven years. So there's no restrictions in terms of capabilities. It's more depending on the subscription and uh, there is also enterprise subscription in terms that you need some extra that can be extended. Okay, uh, this is what I was showing you here. We have two uh, widgets, one is a web server and one is a VNC, which I see now the PLC for, for some sake now is disconnected so I cannot access it, but this is kind of a see it all in one uh, dashboard, which is not that efficient. And it's more in terms of uh, uh, for demo purposes. Uh, okay, so now what I've showed you an ex uh, examples of dashboards. Uh, going next, here we can see some asset management. I will not go into that because there is a lot of functionality here. What we can see here, we have routers. As we said, some of the PLCs require routers. So for this, we have routers management. We have the PLC management. We can remote, securely remote access them through here. As we saw from the dashboards, we can also do VNC web server from here or open secure VPN to connect remotely, securely to the PLCs and they do programming, whatever is required, whatever is enabled to that. And our asset management, meaning our machine management and each one of the machine has its information. If it has currently any raised alarms, we can see them here. This is the last data that was transmitted from the PLC. If you ask me when, the answer is now it's 1721. So it was like was four minutes ago. And if you ask how often it's being updated, the answer is here as per the setting. In this case, it's every five minutes and one second. Going forward to the events, here you can see there are we have event management, as I showed you, as I told you before, we can have events which are schedule based, telemetry based or alarm based. So if we take a telemetry schedule event and I'll go to the edit, what you can see in the first, this is a wizard based definition. You can specify if it's a scheduling alarm or telemetry. How, what is the latch time? If the same event happens again, what would be, how long will they not uh, notify about the same event? What is the means of uh, communication, whether email or SMS? Here we have a very advanced uh, condition builder, and we can go in and create our own condition saying if let's say uh, I don't know, temperature is greater than 70, trigger the event. Or we can say if temperature of pump two, for example, pump two temperature is, for example, let's compare it to another field is greater than pump one just as an example. And the third example, just to show you the variety of capabilities, it can be if pump three temperature, okay, will be 
greater than, and here we can incorporate some calculation and say that we would like, in this, in this case, if it's greater than, for example, temperature one, or whatever we would like to select here, temperature, here it is, temperature one plus pump two temperature also. Just as an example, save it, and here you can see various examples of ways you can trigger the event. In the third part, you can build your your message and specify what objects you would like to do and then build the message and define the audience. I will not do it here because I don't want to waste your time. And I will switch forward. And I can switch forward. Okay, here we have the organization management, I showed it to you before. I don't have anything extra to show you. The difference here, uh, for example, in terms of asset or PLCs, that you see it based on a specific customer. So if you have Holiday Inn in Moscow, you can see which assets are belong to him versus asset management here, where you can see all the assets, including the Moscow one. Uh, I will go forward for the last uh, option, and this is our dashboard managers. Sorry, dashboard the editor, and here I'll just create a new dashboard. As you can see, each dashboard built from the beginning as a business uh, intelligence dashboard for BI. You can scope it. It can be for all organization or for a specific organization. It can contain multiple types of machines, or it can be specific one. It can be last month, last year, whatever it is. And this is my starting point. And you can also specify in which territory. Going forward, obviously, if we would like to change the filtering, you have the option here, and you can change it from here. And beside it, what you can do, and I'll just do it very fast, you can use various widgets. As you can see, we have quite a lot drag, drag, drop, configure. We have the standard five steps wizard where in the first one, we specify what types of machine we would like to work with. In the maps widget, it's predefined, so it's very fast and easy to do it. We have various databases that we are accessing. In terms of the map, it's always the updated info, which we call last value. Then we can do some data multi uh, manipulation. In this case, it's not required. Next step is the customization, it's the look and feel. The last one is the navigation. What will happen if I'll click on a specific one? For example, here I would like to say, if I'm clicking on a specific asset, okay, and we saw this one, I would like to go to the specific asset information and finished. In practice, if I'll just do preview, you see, it's already ready-made, zooming in, clicking, and we saw this before, and you can see this is the one dashboard that is already there based on the asset we selected. I went back to our uh, dashboard, and here I'll just show you one more. Obviously, we have multiple, we have table widgets, we have graphs, columns, lines, maps, pies. You saw some of them in the dashboard, and just to show you some of the abilities, I just pick up a, another one. Let's take a value. This is the simplest one. Okay, let's say I would like to select a, again, the same electronics pumping system. This is our demo one. And let's say I would like just to see the current average temperature. For some reason today, I'm around temperature. So for me to see, the current average temperature of all the machines existing now, the only thing I need to do is select the, the right data source. In this case, it will, I will take the aggregation of the last value, and this one, one will show me the average of all my pumps one temperature, and to do that, that's the only thing I need to do. We have a big data with aggregation capabilities behind the scene. No need for you to code, nothing at all. Everything is done automatically. Next, next, finish, and that's it. And this is the average temperature of all my machines now.
Now, if you want to know how many, okay, in this case, let's take the average. Let me just copy it to make my life easier. And I'll just change the database, not taking the aggregate last value. Here, I'll take the aggregated overall value. And the data scope would be the last month, if I'm not wrong, in my dashboard. Let's go here again. I'll just drop it. Okay, and the question would be first, how many records we have in our view? So I'm just, I did calculation and this is one, the number we'll see now, the average will be based on more than 1 million records. So I did count just to show it and the average here. So the average of pump one across 1 million reading over my, is 40 degrees. Next, here again, we can play with the look and feel and the set colors do various things here. I will not play with it now. And practically that's it. And you can see here that the current average temperature is 33 degrees versus the overall average temperature in the period of last year, which we have more than 1 million reading is 40 degrees. Obviously this can be done uh, with various widgets, which will no, not go any further. Uh, any question at this point? Uh, if you have one, please write them down. I will read. There, was, there are some questions here that I was asked. I will answer them so you have some opportunities to ask extra questions. Uh, one question was here Can you change PLC code from the VPN VNC? Uh, the answer is from the secure VPN, definitely. This is exactly why. We provide it. You have a secure channel that opens a link to your PLC. And obviously, if you allow coding remotely, you can do that. You're downloading a secure, uh, like a client on, on your side, and it opens a secure VPN. VNC not, is not for coding because VNC is for Unistream PLCs to, v, to view the HMI remotely. That's about a uh, remote coding. There is a question here, what's the difference between VNC, VPN, and web? The answer is, as I said, VNC is remote access to Unistream HMI. Web is a remote secure access, all of them are secure, to Unistream web server. So if you design a web server application on inside the Unistream, which supports a web server, you can run it uh, securely. Uh, and VPN, this is the secure VPN where you opening a point-to-point -point secure encryption to your PLC only if you are if you have a UniCloud a certificate uh, approved and you have a username and password. And only if you run the connection, opening the connection now, you can access it securely and to do remote programming. I'm just reading the next one. Uh, the question here is how many uh, receivers can be for one notification? The answer is it's unlimited. The only limitation we are doing is that the receiver must be a, a UniCloud user. The whole system is secure. We, as you saw also, now also ISO certified and all data is guarded and secure. So to allow people to get notification, they need to have UniCloud a, a user. Uh, what we're providing is not only simple notification, you can also provide a, a CSV attachment or in a, inside the email a table of data, again, based on the configuration similar to what you saw now on the dashboard, the same configuration is running also for a, the notification part. So the limitation is having a, a, a registered user and then you can create your own groups and uh, notify each, each group based on whatever uh, logic you would like to have. UniCloud doesn't have limitation on number of users. We don't have a limitation on number of groups. And you can mix and match whatever your business needs are requiring you. 
the next question is, is it possible to add APIs to the dashboard? The answer at present, it is not. Uh, but if you have any specific questions, please uh, contact us. Okay, you can go and write us a question and we can discuss and see what are your exact needs and maybe we can address them. Uh, are there any other questions at this point or uh, can I uh, continue? Last chance to ask questions. Okay. Don't uh, worry if you'll have later on some questions. We'll be, we'll be happy to answer them offline also. Okay, next part, uh, business benefits. Uh, what we come across, what we experience is uh, customers coming to us and tell us, uh, asking us why should we have, have our PLCs connected, our machines connected to, to cloud. Yes, we heard about IoT, Industry 4.0, etc., etc. But what is the benefit for us? Uh, for me, I would say this is quite obvious, but I'm I'm living it on a daily basis. Uh, and uh, if we go one, I'll go one step backwards and look at the big picture. Is first of all the reach. You get you having access to your machines, to your customers. To the data, we know the data is the king. Data, the knowledge allows you to do things better, you know, be more uh, profitable, have your machine more effective, do uh, uh, design your machine in a better way, and offer uh, you know uh, superior machines, uh, which allows you, as uh, as it's written here, increase your sales in various ways, which we'll talk about in a moment. Save cost, take your data and confer, convert it into value. And obviously what we talked about at the beginning or while we've been here, eh, as we have the machine connected, we can also do remote eh, access for supporting and maintaining and providing services based on that eh, and avoiding eh, traveling or eh, being disconnected from eh, the machine. So in terms of increasing sales, first of all, having a connected machine allows you to give some better services. You know what's happening with the machine, so you can position your machine as more advanced. You know what's happening there. You can monitor it. You can improve it. You can know when it should be maintained. And obviously, the quality of the machine and the service will be higher, higher based on customers that can operate the machine also remotely. We have also widgets that allow you to update the PLC. And this is beside uh, allowing you, as we showed, also having a widget for the VNC, which actually accessing the overall PLC remotely or using the web server if you have web server in your PLC. So that's one thing. If you have consumables, we have many customers that they having, for example, in the let's say water uh, treatment area, air treatment area, other uh, treatment issues where you have some uh, chemicals you're using, when you're using filters, when you're using some uh, salts, for example. This is something that in many cases, some of you are charging your customers. They have to refill that. They have to service it, knowing how many working hours are there. You know, we have customers that are providing some uh, a paper that they are cutting and they're charging their customers based on use. So they're charging them on, on the, based on the amount of paper that consume, on based on the amount of number of labels that have been printed. So this allows you, if you are not there today, to come up and do some different uh, business models. You know, some customers would like to pay based on use, you know, not just to buy the machine. This allows you to do that. You can Monitor it, obviously you can manage the machine remotely, but you can turn it on and off if you would like, because we give you the control of how to manage and uh, manipulate your machine. Service-wise, today I'm sure that some of you are servicing based on periodical your machines. That's not efficient. Here you can save cost. You can 
plan your services in advance. You can do it before the machine is breaking down. Offering this kind of services can increase your sales because in, in cases that the machines today are not connected, you are basing your service on a call from the customer. In this case, you know in advance that the machine is going to be broken or it reached the service period based on the operation. Think about the possibility it's open for you to do different types of uh, operations. On top of that, now that you will be able to know when the machine can be serviced, you can offer your customers also service contracts, which will be much more efficient on your side and much more productive for your customers. As if you provide them dashboards and they will see that their machine, let's say if it's a water purification, providing them currently water that are not, let's say, that good to be dr uh, drunk in, okay, because there is some pollution there, obviously they will be more inclined to ask for service. And then they would see the value of having a service contract because it will make sure that you are servicing them all the time and the quality of the water would be always at par and they will be happy from, from that. So this is from the sales perspective. From saving the cost, again, servicing itself is very uh, expensive. You need to have technicians, you need to have cars, you have travel expenses, you're losing working hours if you are not doing it on time. We came to places where, uh, for example, your customers of ours dealing with the uh, with garbage collection or uh, recycling uh, collection, and because they do not know when the the can where they're putting the recycling products is being a uh, full, they are doing it on periodical basis, and they are very very not efficient by connecting their uh, machines to uh, online. Now they can come. On time, saving a lot of time, a lot of money, a lot of resources. Think about doing it the right way. You can save on, also on vehicles, not only on working hours. Okay, having you know a better service obviously it will improve the customer satisfaction, less downtime. You can also prolong the machine lifetime, as you know, the working hours or the throughput. If you're speaking about uh, replacing a filter based on X amount of liters of fluid, and you know how much you went through it, you can make uh, the machine much more efficient and prolong its life. Oops, sorry. In terms of transforming data to business value, you can manage your customers now. Now, as the, all the machines are connected, I showed you some dashboards where you can do comp comparison between different customers. You can see data which maybe does not interest your customers, but you can show you how your machines are performing. You can improve your machines. You can offer customers more, more uh, services or more data as you can build different dashboard to different type of customers. Dif if you're a machine builder, you can build your own dashboards, which you see different data than the customers. You can have a an HMI-like uh, dashboard, which shows you the current information, you can build aggregated data, which can show you uh, the view of the data in a prolonged uh, time. You can compare between different machines. As I showed you, we have different type of, of databases. We have the raw data, which you see the telemetry. We have the last data, which we see the current view. We have the aggregated data that you can do uh, some comparison you know, through, through the time. And we have also the last uh, last transla uh, transmitted data, which you can aggregate and compare the last value across the various ma uh, machines. And using the alarms and the reports that you can also create based on scheduling from the notification model, you can create much more value in data and information to you as the owner of overall uh, solution and to the customer basis where you can use and provide them daily reports, monthly reports, incident reports. If there is an alarm, you can provide them this kind of information additionally. And the data can be shown based on dashboards or through email or SMS messages. Okay, trigger activities. We have a customer that uh, 
design his machine. And for example, his machine is based on a sequence to, uh, that has to be run uh, step by step. Otherwise, uh, the, the pr product of the sequence is, uh, is, is uh, let's say, get faulty. So what they did, they introduced alarms. And if the sequence is incorrect, they're raising uh, alarms and then they can teach or escort the users while they're doing it. So it's kind of on the job training. So they said, if a user didn't do, it, do the right sequence, immediately they're raising an uh, SMS message to the user, to his manager, which can online contact the user and tell him you did it wrong. This is the right way, the right way to do it. And this kind of eliminates a bad batch which allows them to do corrective measurements immediately and not to wait to the end process. And that's part of the value that you have data. And the data you, you transfer into value. In this case, you are uh, avoiding throwing uh, full batches of products that are part of a, a manufacturing process, for example. And all this is without changing P the PLC program. We allow you to sit on top of uh, the process to look into various PLCs to define business rules in this event management uh, module and do it, change it, experience, experience with it. There's no changes in the machine and you don't, cannot do any harm. You're just overlooking, monitoring the data and based on this data, you can create events, you can change them. You can monitor a specific machine. You don't have to monitor all of them. Again, depending on your business needs, and you don't need to change any PLC. It can be a Neutronics PLC in many cases, or it can be any other device or PLC using uh, the Modbus connectivity. Uh, I don't think here I need to go further. We talked about the remote access, the secure remote access, being able to view the PLC HMI, the access the web server, all of them securely. You can also configure the routers, the Neutronics routers. We are using also as a cloud gateway and program your PLC securely. Uh, with this, I concluded my uh, presentation and now it's questions time. If you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. I will give you one, two minutes if you have any questions to write them down. Uh, I have a question here. Can Unicloud work with a Vision PLC? Uh, my answer was uh, it can work with any, any PLC. Okay, for Vision PLC, what you need is to have a Unicloud router, okay? And if you go to Unitronics, let me just open a, just a second, please. I just want to open a, sorry, okay. And uh, if we we'll go to unitronics.cloud, this is the, okay. What you see here, this is, you can find here all the information about uh, Unicloud. And if you go to start here, we have a very step-by-step -step explanation for, if you're just going for a test drive with demo data, if you're using Unicloud, and if you're using Visions. For Visions and other, what you need, additionally to the Vision, is also a router. You can see here the details for the routers here. As Unicloud routers has internally a Unicloud, a, sorry, Unicloud routers have a Unicloud gateway inside where you go in and you can configure your PLCs and connect them. For more details, just go into connecting here and you have here two vid uh, videos here uh, showing you step-by-step step how to configure it.
I hope I answered on the V130 communications uh, question. For earlier models of Visions, Jazz, even M90, what you should do, you can use the same router, but use Modbus. And here you have information how to connect using Modbus, which is very similar, but it's a different uh, communication protocol. Questions more? I'll give you two more minutes for those of you who would like to ask more questions and uh, we will finish this session. Okay, I see that there are no other questions, so I would like to thank you all for participating. Again, if you have any additional questions, don't hesitate and you can write to us and we'll be happy to answer you. You can write to unicloud.unitronics.com or to support at unitronics.com and we'll be happy to come back to you and answer your questions. Thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye-bye.